Welcome everybody once again to Casa Arena here in Barcelona, live, and we're glad you're able to join us here on the eighth day. We've been here all week interviewing swimmers that have won medals at the World Championships, and I'm sitting next to one that has won two silver medals here in Barcelona, Lada Fries from Denmark. Yeah. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> so congratulations, two silver Thank medals. You yeah. gave me one, you got the other one. I'll hold them up for you yeah. here. Two silver medals, 800 freestyle, and the 1500 freestyle. Just two incredible races. That Let's just start real quick with that 1500 history making. Both mm -hmm. you and Katie Ledecky under the world record. I would imagine all, all year in training, you were thinking 15, 52, 10 that world record has to be broken. Yeah, uh, I didn't actually think that because it was really hard for me to swim this season because of my poor results in London. So I was not really motivated until like two months ago. So I was really surprised that I could actually swim that fast. But I think being next to, to Katie also made that possible because I love to compete and I know that Katie does too. <laughs> so if you think if Katie hadn't been there, you might not have even been able to break 16 minutes? Is that what you're, you're saying? Uh, I, I don't think it would have been that fast at least. <laughs> Yeah. I think it would have been fast, but I think it would just have not been under 40. <laughs> sure, sure, absolutely. So when you touched the wall and you turned around and saw that you had, had broken the world record, mm. you were under a world record, what was going through your head? Uh, I was really stunned because right before the final I was hoping to be able to go down and try and push the European record of, of 44. So being under the world record and being under it with that much uh, was just amazing. I mean, I didn't expect that at all. <laughs> right. Now, the World Championships is the only place they do the 1500 for the women. Mm. Um, how were you able to put two 1500s behind you and get ready for the, 18, eight, the 800? Um, it is hard, you know, but I've been doing it for, for a few years now and you know you get used to it but it's still hard to get the you know the momentum going again in the race and the heats and, and again in the final uh, but I think you do, you just have to focus on what's coming up uh, and the race take one race at a time I think that's the that's the key right so you said you were disappointed about your swims in London it was hard for you to come back I would imagine now you've got a good deal of motivation yeah. for you going into Rio yeah I do I actually thought coming into this competition that I would only have to fight for a bronze and I was thinking okay is it worth you know swimming that much and and you know sacrifice time with family and friends and coming out with these two medals and and the times I've had uh, is just amazing and and definitely giving me the motivation to continue to Rio. So next year at the the uh, European Championships, which is going to be your big meet next summer, mm, correct? Yeah. Uh, I imagine you're going to swim the 400, which you didn't swim here in yeah. Barcelona as well. So you've got to be excited about the possibilities for that. <laughs> I, I am. I am. You know, everybody's saying, oh, you could have won a medal in the 400. And yeah, that's probably true. But I don't think if I'd done the 400, I would have been able to swim as fast as right. I did in the 15. So um, actually, you know, it's a bit of sweet feeling, <laughs> but, but I will definitely do it in, in Berlin next year. So you train in France uh, with actually a very talented group of people. I understand Camille Lacour is one of them. Right? No, Camille Mufat. Camille Mufat. Sorry, yeah. I've got my Camille's mixed <laughs> Camille up. Mixed up. <laughs> uh, and, um, and that's got to be a really great training location. I understand it was where Yannick Agnell had mm. also trained before he moved to Baltimore, right? Yeah, it was. It's a really nice group. Uh, right now we are only five swimmers. Yeah, Camille Mufin and myself. And then we have Marco Bellotti from Italy and uh, Damien Schulli, who swims the 1500, 800. And then Charlotte Bonnet, who's on the French 4x200 relay. Right. So it's a really nice group and we get along really good and, and have like a great training session every single time. So yeah, good. <laughs> so you have, and you have Camille there to race for, for yeah, freestyle and I you do. have Damien there to help mm. you with the distance stuff. Yeah. That probably helps you a lot. It does, it does a lot. I mean, it's hard to, to be alone. I, I used to train alone in Denmark, so I'm really happy to have this group of people now are surrounding me right. every single day at training. How did you pick? Uh, France to, to go to train? Uh, I was looking to get, you know, to go somewhere else after London. I needed to try and see if I could find my, my motivation again. And I met some of the French swimmers in London and we're supposed to go there just to say hi. Uh, and they were in the startup camp. And I got there and I was really fascinated by how they trained and, and the group and, and Fabrice. So, um, 
I just got an offer to go there and I jumped at it. <laughs> right, and you had to be, were you at first hesitant when you first got there? Were the results coming for you as well as you had thought when you first started training? Uh, I mean, I did really good at the Europeans and World Short Course in December and November, so I thought maybe that was an indication, but I still didn't have quite my motivation and, and wasn't really, you know, looking forward to going to training and going to compete again. So. So I thought maybe if I just stuck, stuck with it and, and kept on going, it would come back, and it did. So I'm just so happy that I've always been told, you know, to, to stick with stuff and, and try and, and, and work it out. And I'm so glad I did here yeah, in absolutely. France. <laughs> uh, and speaking of your teammates in Denmark doing very well here, and mm. they've been doing very well for the past, I'd say, year and a half now. Mm. What do you attribute to people like Jeanette Otis and Gray who won the 50 fly last night? What do you attribute to Denmark really making a statement now in the world? I think we're just a really, you know, we are a really small country. We're only four, four girls here. <laughs> so. Uh, I think, and we, we push each other because everyone wants to, you know, be the best and have the best results. And I think that's what does that, that we're such, such a talented group of, of swimmers here now. And we've done so good here, and I think we just want to keep on going. And I think also everybody called our Olympics a little bit disappointed because we didn't come home with medals. So I think we just wanted to show not only Denmark but the entire swimming community that we actually better than what we performed in, yeah. in London. Yeah. So. Um, Looking ahead, like I said, European Championships next year. You know, do you think there's there's going to be kind of like a, a Denmark domination? You know, with only four girls, I think you know yeah. to be able to, to do as well as you guys have been. I think it I think it says a lot about where you're going. Is there any kind of goal looking forward to Rio about this many medals we, we should win or anything like that? Uh, not quite yet. I think we we just took this World Championships uh, and then we haven't really begun thinking about the Europeans in Berlin. Uh, but I think. It will come pretty quickly. I mean, now we have the World Cups, and then we will go on vacation, all of us, and then we have European short course in, in actually Denmark. Yeah. So I think we are all looking forward to you know just getting to race in Denmark, and I think we'll take the long course championship after that. <laughs> yeah, well, you'll have a big crowd cheering for you. Though. Yeah, exactly. It'll be amazing. <laughs> That'll be fun. Uh, before we go, I want to just point out your fingernails. Just yeah. absolutely made you paint them in the flag of Denmark. <laughs> yeah. That's really kind of kind of cool to, yeah, to do Yeah, I always do that. Um, I mean, it's. it's it's pretty easy. It's not like the American flag with all the. Yeah, that would be very hard. <laughs> I talked to Chloe Sutton about it. She loves it. She, she always compliments on me on them. So I mean, I do it, and about it's kind of my lucky charm. How long does it take to do all that? I think it take about like 15 minutes, maybe. Okay. So it's not not bad. Yeah. I mean, I do it just relaxing in the hotel room, so it's not yeah. bad. <laughs> well, it worked for you. This yeah, I week. did. <laughs> well, Lottie, thanks so much for joining us. Congratulations mm -hmm. again. Thank, Thank you. you for letting me hold your yeah, medal through the whole welcome. interview. <laughs> It is very heavy and very big, so uh, yeah. two silver medals, 800 and 1500. We're looking forward to uh, seeing you again in the pool. Yeah, me too. <laughs> all right, so that's going to wrap it up here for Casa Arena, not just for today, but this whole week. We thank you all for joining us throughout all eight days here in Barcelona. We've had a lot of fun. Thank you to Arena for letting us be here every day, and we thank everybody who joined me for our interviews. And we thank you at swimmingworld.com for joining us. Thanks a lot.